Hi, it's Lisa Salberg with the HCMA with part three of my update from the Heart Rhythm Society meeting held last week in Denver, Colorado. We're going to be discussing EKG screenings in athletes and in the general community in this clip. And we're going to talk about um, a couple of different presentations from HRS. So first off, Dr. Christine Lawless presented some data on the U.S.'s ability to interpret um, athletes' EKGs appropriately. She surveyed 371 physicians from different um, subsets, including family practice and um, internal medicine, pediatrics, cardiology, and sports medicine. And she only uh, published a survey on those who had done 50 or more sports physicals per year. And I'm going to read here from her findings. In all of the people that she surveyed, the number of people who appropriately interpreted an EKG um, for an athlete with LVH, so just left ventricular hypertrophy, no hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, they found that these physicians were very likely to inappropriately disqualify this population from competitive athletics. Some of the numbers um, not allowing people with LVH to play in the family practitioners, 53%, 63% in uh, internal medicine, 39% of pediatric uh, specialists, 45% of cardiologists, and 52% of sports medicine docs. So LVH is not a disqualifier, but this group of people is being disqualified. They were pretty good at identifying those with HCM and disqualifying them across the board. The lowest group was actually the pediatricians disqualifying 81% who were positive for HCM. And the highest was the sports med docs um, actually beating out the cardiologist by 1% at 96%. So yes, we can identify and disqualify um, based on EKGs for some people um, appropriately, now, you know, 95%, 96%. But we're disqualifying people who should not be disqualified, who just have LVH. So this survey goes to show that we need to do a lot more research on how to identify and appropriately qualify or disqualify players. In another session, there were four uh, programs about EKG screenings in different populations. One is the neonates or the newborns. And that's not to look for HCM, that's to look for long QT and other channelopathies. Uh, the data is still being compiled as to the usefulness of, of the screening. The problem really came in that we don't really have the resources to read all the EKGs. So doing an EKG we know is pretty simple, especially in a hospital setting. But the interpretation um, is going to be left to, in all likelihood, pediatric electrophysiologists, which there are very few of in this country. Um, I think the number was 4 million live births per year. So that would be EKGs on 4 million that need to be read. And I think there are, you know, under, you know, 1,000 electro, uh, pediatric electrophysiologists in the country. So do the math. These guys are going to be spending all their days reading these EKGs if we were to institute such a program. So obviously we need to train up the, the workforce to be ready for that or provide some other type of testing that would help identify those kids. So the jury is still out on the pediatric you know, neonate screening um, by EKG. The next group was those children who are taking uh, stimulant medication for ADHD, such as Proterra, Ritalin, etc. Um, the number of sudden deaths in that population was actually lower than the total number of sudden deaths we would expect to see in the general population when you calculate life years um, that they've been actually taking the medication and the number of people taking it. So I think the jury is still out whether or not um, you need to do those EKGs before a kid is going to get a um, ADHD medication. Uh, data still to come. Last two groups, um, one was the military. I was very um, surprised to learn that the United States military does not do EKG screenings of all its new recruits, nor does it really do take a lot of family history questions. Um, those who are getting screened in the military include pilots, divers, and those dismantling bombs, which we would all agree is probably a good group to have EKGs. Um, but they're not even doing um, EKGs on the rank and file officers or enlisted 
men and women. So that's an issue. And the last group I'm going to discuss is um, the athletes. So what do we know about athlete screening? We all know the Italian data and Italians are doing screenings. Americans are not Italians. We have a different healthcare system and we need to be very clear on that. What I thought was important that was brought up in the conversation after the, um, the presentation on EKG screening in athletes is we really need to compare what's going on in the United States versus what's going on in Italy in terms of outcomes, not the testing, but the outcomes. In the United States, we do the PPE questionnaire as recommended by the American Heart Association. And in Italy, they do a family questionnaire, but we're not sure what questions they're asking. I'm looking into that right now. And they do the EKG. But when you compare the two programs, the number of deaths over a 25-year period in each program are equal. So by doing extra testing and extra screening, are we actually changing outcomes? And right now the data is saying no. The outcomes are the same. So that's one very critical issue. The other issue that uh, was not brought up in session, but in conversations that I had with a number of different um, cardiologists from around the country, was the role of the quick screen echocardiogram in diagnosing HCM. So we know there's a lot of programs around the country, great, well-meaning programs that are using these quick screen echocardiograms claiming that they're diagnostic of HCM. And I've got a problem with this. There is yet to be one study to validate a quick screen echocardiogram to be diagnostic of HCM. So if you're participating in a screening program and you think that you're being screened for HCM, unless you have a full comprehensive echocardiogram by a cardiologist, um, that's really the only way that we can rule in or out HCM. So these quick screen programs might be leaving people with a false sense of security. The EKG screening, on the other hand, might be opening a door to let people get in to be evaluated. And that's still to be determined who we should be doing these on and who we should not be doing them on. Um, the jury's still out. It's a debate that's going to need a lot more data collection and a lot more analysis before we come up with a great answer. I would say right now, if you're thinking about running a program, think very long and hard about what your protocols are going to be and what your consent forms are going to look like. Make sure people know this is not an answer forever. It's a moment in time. The screening is just a snapshot. And hopefully, as we gather more data and we do more research, we'll learn more about echo screenings and EKG screenings in athletes. But we also need to remember that it's not just athletes who are dying suddenly. Within the HCM world, 80% of those who die under the age of 24 are not athletes. At least 20% that are athletes. So if you're out there thinking, my kid's not an athlete, I don't have to worry about it, think again. Look at your family history, look at your symptoms, look at the sudden cardiac risk assessment form available on the HCMA website for hints to know if your family might be at risk for sudden cardiac arrest. So the debate rages on and I encourage you all to participate in the debate and share your thoughts, feelings, and most importantly, your research dollars with this important effort. Thanks. Have a good day.